Apex Entertainment Center wants families to spend time together and have fun. That's why they're supporting my efforts to help the Doug Flutie Jr. Foundation for Autism. On November 25th at 6.30 p.m., you can help me support the foundation too. I'm Andrew Roberts, a 16-year-old aspiring sports reporter. As a Flutie Fellow, the foundation and Apex Entertainment are proudly supporting my career efforts. Please visit FlutieFoundation.org and sign up to bowl, eat, and have fun while watching Gonk Knox, my series about the Algonquin Teahawks. Apex Entertainment Center wants families to spend time together and have fun. That's why they're supporting my efforts to help the Doug Flutie Jr. Foundation for Autism. On November 25th at 6.30 p.m., you can help me support the foundation too. I'm Andrew Roberts, a 16-year-old aspiring sports reporter. As a Flutie Fellow, the foundation and Apex Entertainment are proudly supporting my career efforts. Please visit FlutieFoundation.org and sign up to bowl, eat, and have fun while watching Gonk Knox, my series about the Algonquin Teahawks. Come see Gonk Knox, November 25th. Sites for that event and all the great work you're doing. Pumped. And I'm so impressed with you. And I looked at some of your videos and I loved them. And I really like the Gonk Knox. And if I can be there for the debut, I will be. Hi, I'm Lenny Clark, and I love Gonk Knox. I'm Jamie Parker, and I love Gonk Knox. What's up, everybody? We are here live at E Money's party, and Gronk loves Gonk Knox. Let's go. You know how it goes down. You got to check it out. It's your boy Wiggy here. Hey, what's up, people? David Pasternak here, and I love Gonk Knox, boys. Hey, I'm Adam McQuaid with the Columbus Blue Jackets, and I love Gonk Knox. Charlie McAvoy of the Boston Bruins, and I love Gonk Knox. It's close. And they got it! It's a first down! Riley Greenwald with the hard count draws Shrewsbury offsides, and now, Andrew, it's going to be first and goal for Algonquin. That's just three yards to go for a TD. Another three-back set. Riley under center. This alignment has worked so well in this game. It's up the middle, Cassius Clay, touchdown Algonquin! That's Cassius Clay with the touchdown, and Algonquin takes the lead, 12 to seven with 5.16 to go. Let's see what they do for the point after. And they will go for two here, Andrew. 5.16 to go. Try to make it 14 to seven. You got most of the line lined up far left. Riley in the shotgun. Five minutes and 16 seconds left. And Riley rolls right, he's gonna run it. He's close, and I think he's in. And it is a two point conversion. Riley Greenwald with the two point conversion. And the crowd is going crazy here at Algonquin High School. 5.16 to go, and now Algonquin has taken the lead. 14 to seven. Just like that, Algonquin up by a TD. Andrew, that was an 82 yard drive for Algonquin. 
eat up a lot of clock. Very impressive. Probably the best drive of the year for Algonquin with a tight Shrewsbury defense. Had a lot of big plays here, Andrew. Yeah, it's... What were, what were some of the big plays that we had in that drive? So we had Rio Ferguson with some great rushes. We had Tom Jeffrey on with a 14-yard catch. Very impressive with Riley Greenwald on the two-point conversion. Rolls right, breaks a tackle, and dives in for the touchdown, or two-point conversion, rather. And now Algonquin up 14-7 with 5.16 to go. Apex Entertainment Center wants families to spend time together and have fun. That's why they're supporting my efforts to help the Doug Flutie Jr. Foundation for Autism. On November 25th at 6.30 p.m., you can help me support the foundation too. I'm Andrew Roberts, a 16-year-old aspiring sports reporter. As a Flutie Fellow, the foundation and Apex Entertainment are proudly supporting my career efforts. Please visit FlutieFoundation.org and sign up to bowl, eat, and have fun while watching Gonk Knox, my series about the Algonquin Teahawks. Hi everyone, I'm Algonquin sophomore Andrew Roberts, and I'm here to introduce you guys to Gonk Knox. Very excited to introduce you to it. Um, and it all started back when I met head coach Taylor Allen prior to my freshman year of high school. We had the idea to do a Hard Knock style series about the Algonquin football team. And we called it Gonk Knox because Gonk, the nickname for Algonquin. So my dad and I went out to some of the preseason practices, took some footage, and we put some we put a series together that first year. And Gonk Knox has it's been going for two years now. Chronicles what Algonquin does in the preseason to prepare, and now the movie is going to be debuting here at Apex Entertainment tonight. And it's going to be benefiting not only the team through the Algonquin Football Boosters, but also the Doug Flutie Jr. Foundation for Autism. So I'm very excited for this event, and I'm very excited to see what this movie can do. Hi, I'm Ken Roberts, Andrew Roberts' dad, and I'm also the videographer for Gonk Knox. We are really excited tonight to debut our movie here at Apex Entertainment Center in Marlboro. Proceeds from this movie will help benefit the Algonquin Football Boosters and the Doug Flutie Jr. Foundation for Autism. We all we got, we all we need. Enjoy the show. Hey, my name's Taylor Allen. I'm the head football coach here at Algonquin Regional High School. Uh, two years ago, I had an opportunity to do a project with Andrew Roberts uh, called Gonk Knox. It was an in-depth insight and uh, look at how we ran our preseason football camp. Um, throughout that time, you, you kind of get to see how the team grows and uh, develops into the team we are now. And uh, it's, it's just really, it's a really good opportunity to work with Andrew and, and to see him progress over time. And it was just a great opportunity for our entire coaching staff and our kids to be, be a, a part of something really special like this. So um, moving forward, I, I hope we can kind of get this, uh, this thing rolling throughout next year and, and years to come. But, you know, until then, I hope you guys enjoy the show. We all we got, we all we need. Go T-Hawks. What's up, everybody? We are here live at E-Money's party, and Gronk loves Gonk Knots. Let's go. Football is back, and here at Algonquin, it all started today. The Algonquin Tomahawks had a busy day ahead of them, including team meetings and the first official practice of the 2019 preseason. Before the meeting, I caught up with head coach Taylor Allen. He filled me in about some things to watch for at practice and the team's goals and motto for the season. So I'm here with head coach Taylor Allen leading up to the 2019-2020 season for Algonquin Tomahawks football. Now, what are some new players that we should look out for this year? Um, right off the bat, I mean, you look at the, the, the up-and-coming sophomores. Um, Ralph Gutierrez, uh, you know, he's going to be a slot kid for us. He can run good routes, he has pretty good hands. He has a lot to work on, but uh, you know, I've been working with him all summer. Uh, so he should be very productive in our spread offense. Um, another kid uh, that I can think of is going to be Eli Casabo. He, on the, he's a defensive back. He also has a lot to work on but he has raw talent. Um, James Jankovic uh, is another kid that's gonna be uh, you know, very productive for us on the offensive side of the ball as a wing back or a uh, you know, straight behind the quarterback, fullback type kid. 
and potentially an overhang safety or, or a linebacker. So he's a, he's a sophomore. Um, I, I have high hopes for that kid too. There's, there's a lot of, uh, of new kids for sure that, that can make a, a significant impact for us, but time will tell. We're gonna find out, you know, especially today. What positions are you unsure of right now? Uh, our defensive back is, is probably um, our, our weak point. Um, but we have a lot of time, we have a lot of athletes, so it's all about teaching in the classroom and, and uh, evaluating on the field. And, you know, we're going to make a lot of uh, important decisions, you know, come the next couple weeks. And what about returning players? Anyone we should look out for to step it up this season? Yeah, I think a lot of teams this year are going to target Rio Ferguson. Uh, they're going to key on uh, where he's lined up in the backfield or sp uh, split out in the slot. Um, Nick Alessi is one of those kids as well. He'll be in the slot. Uh, he's a def uh, defensive back too, so um, they're going to have to know where number one and number 44 are at all times. Um, some line kids, you got John Fontecchio. Uh, you know, he's, he's a great leader for us. He leads by example. Great player. Um, Thanksgiving last year, uh, you know, he, he was very disruptive in the backfield. He would shoot a gap and make plays five yards behind the line of scrimmage. Unfortunately, we couldn't score points, but he set the tone for that game in uh, going into the offseason. Uh, we have a lot of momentum just from those three kids alone. Are there any positional battles we should look out for heading into the season? Um, I would say our, our defensive backfield, there's going to be a lot. We're going to find out who's going to be corners, overhang safeties, and free safeties. Um, we have a quarterback battle right now, but they've been battling all summer. So we should have our answer within the next week for a starting quarterback. Um, but other than that, our defensive backfield is, is really one that we're going to key on as a coaching staff. And lastly, so what are your goals and model for the upcoming season? I know last year you had burned the boats. Do you have something similar going this year? Yeah, um, so this year it's we all we got, we all we need. Um, that pretty much means uh, once, once you step on that game field, right when you cross those white lines and you're in, and you're in that game, nobody else can help you. You know, what we have on that field is our family, right? So nobody else is gonna come and save us from difficult situations. Uh, once you're locked in, you're in. So we're, you know, preseason gets us ready for, for those small battles. Two of this year's captains, senior slot receiver and strong safety Nicolesi and junior linebacker and fullback Rio Ferguson were selected in advance by Coach Allen. It's rare to see a junior as a team captain, but Coach Allen trusts Rio who's been here since freshman year to help lead the team. So I'm here with junior captain, linebacker, and fullback Rio Ferguson. Now, last year we had four senior captains. This year, what does it mean to you being a captain as a junior? It's been, I mean, it's not usual that uh, someone other than a senior gets picked for a captain, so it means a lot that they um, respect my leadership and um, what I mean to the team, so that's really cool. And what's one area you're looking to improve in this year to lead the team? Um, I'm trying to become um, the main running back and try to be, be better at that and uh, get more yards. So. And defensively, what are you thinking about this year? Um, I'm trying to beat my last year's um, total tackles for the season. Um, try to improve um, my skill dominance for that. You're already looking to lead the defense. Do you think you can help lead this offense as high school football is a very run-heavy offense? Um, I believe so. I mean, it's all a team effort, so I can't do it myself. And I know um, my guys got my back, and I know they'll help me out, and um, they'll put me in a position to be my best man. So I'm here with senior captain Nick Alesi. So last year as a junior, got some opportunities, both as a receiver and a defensive back. How are you looking to take advantage of increased opportunities this year? Um, so this year I'm trying to go more slot position. Um, I think it can impact me a little bit better. Um, getting guarded by more linebackers, so the corners, they're just off with the wide receivers. I'm more linebackers, and I'm usually faster than linebackers, so I'm hoping to take advantage of that. Now, the team's pretty united with their goals this season. Do you have any personal goals? Um, I'm just trying to do as best as we can, as best as I can. Of course, you can't do uh, only what's, like, you can't, you can't only succeed by yourself, you have to succeed as a team. So um, really, I don't have much personal goals going through. And what does it mean to you being a captain this year? Um, it means a lot. I mean, I feel like I have more responsibility than usual. I um, 
I really need to look out for more of the team with my co-captain Rio. Rio proved Coach Allen right, leading the way in blitzes and for the run game. Alessi also shined in multiple roles. He had a great catch on 7-on-7s, seven seven, beating out Eli Casabo in his route as he played the slot. He also tried his hand at playing running back. The final captain would be selected by the team after practice. Coach Allen started off the team meeting by making the team's goals clear and uniting the team around them. All right, guys, welcome to the 2019 season. A lot of things will change based off of last year, okay? What was our record last year? 2-9. What was our record the year before? So things have to change, right? Right, the way we go about our every day has to change. Team goals for us. Leadership Council met a few months ago and we came up with our team goals. If you smirk or smile or don't believe in one of these goals, that door is wide open for you guys. Is that clear? Is that clear? I'm dead serious with this. The entire coaching staff puts way too much effort. You guys work your tails off to be good football players. Now, we're, what our job is this preseason is to create a really good football team together. Our first goal is having a winning record. Our second goal is to make the playoffs. Very doable this year. Third goal, win in Thanksgiving. Bring the trophy home. All right, that's a huge one. The fourth one, win the district championship. Doable, we can do that. Win the state championship is our last one, because that's the last game that we'll ever play as a team. This, this win right here. And we're gonna end our season on a win. We're gonna we're win the state championship, all right? That should be a goal every time you step on the field. If you guys don't believe any of those, those goals right there, you guys, you guys can definitely leave right now. All right, the expectations from the coaching staff to you guys. What's one thing that you can control every single rep you have? Ocnos. Effort. Effort. I mean, that you don't have to have a lot of skill, right? That's the one thing that you can control every single day. When you get out of bed, your effort is so important, especially on, uh, with football especially in practice, right? Put effort into the classroom to learn all the new stuff that we're gonna throw at you guys. We're throwing a lot of new stuff at you guys. New offense, a little bit of a new defense, right? But we're trying to simplify things so you guys can play fast, right? Special teams changes, Coach Finn's got special teams. All right, so a lot of new stuff coming that way. We have to find long snappers, punters, kickers, and guys that wanna run down the field full speed and hit somebody. That's fun, right? All right, a lot of things are gonna change, little things, like the way we line up for the national anthem, right? So we all kind of scattered, right? We're gonna be on the line, okay? Facing the flag together, next to each other, nice and tight, right? Looking like a team. We have brand new uniforms, okay? New decal layout on the helmets. We're gonna look like a sharp football team. The coaching staff, we, we wanna win football games. We're gonna play to win the game, right? If you guys want to win just as much as the coaching staff and your uh, morals and values align with ours, we're never going to have an issue, okay? But once you stray from the team culture, we have a really good team culture right now. But once you stray off that path, then we have a problem. After this, Coach Allen discussed the offensive formula for success and philosophy. Later, he handed it over to his brother, defensive coordinator Mark Allen, for some defensive stats, values, and key plays. Mark emphasizes controlled aggression when coaching. Extreme aggression, control, okay, within the rules. Is that a legal hit? Yeah. You're hitting him in the chest. Okay. Okay. Controlled aggression. Defensive end, controlled aggression there. Okay? You defeat your blocks like we talked about. You're gonna have a sack, fumble. Okay? I want you to really think about that. It comes down to a basic thing. Can you block? Can you tackle? If you 
can block and you can tackle, you're going to win some football games. That's a great offense. Mike Sherman's a great offensive coach. I heard him in lectures. He's unbelievable. Couldn't win a game at Nostra High. Okay? So the product on the field on Friday night has more to say about whether you win or lose than all the great coaching in the world. After this, it was time to get to work. Stay tuned for more in episode 2 of Gonk Knox. After an important meeting that got the whole team on the same page and gave them some knowledge about the modified playbook, it was time to get out on the practice field. The team started practice all together, rotating between six stations with different basic drills. Listen, we're going to be indie right now. Ramp it up, gentlemen. Okay? You're going to do technique and fundamentals and cover stuff down with Coach Notice, QB. Linebackers, you're going to be with Orlando, so I'm going to rotate around, help groups as we need. And D line, you're down here. Remember your install, you're going to work it. And then we got, we got indie. We got a blitz timeout. We got seven on seven on D. That's it. Compete. Start to show me you want to play if you want to play. Right? If you're hiding in the back, not fighting for reps. Okay? <coughs> That's going to tell us a lot. You want it, let's go. I told the guys as they came to my group, I got one goal. I want to win a game at Gillette at the end of the year. <coughs> let's go. You know your spots. d line's going to be here. Linebackers are going to be wherever they went. And DBs are going to be uh, down in DB land. Go ahead, bring it up, bring it up, bring it up. Helmet on. Strap, strap every buckle you have on that helmet up you right now. There? Guys, RC's the well, D already down here. Right, yeah, this is officially the start of the You got the two man right? yep. Strap up your helmet. Let's play some right? football. Right? Oh, TV, oh. break us down. Hard work out three. One, two, three. Hard work! While the older players did defensive positional drill, the freshmen went off to the side for their own practice. Today was the first time freshmen picked up an Algonquin playbook, so it took time for them to learn the basic plays. But once they caught on, they looked pretty impressive. The defensive backs also took time to succeed as many people moved to the position as a result of Sam Crane's departure in the slightly modified defense all Uncles implemented. With Crane leaving, there's an important starting job on the line, and the next man up will have to earn it. Team goal is to get five of them, right? The last one was to win a state championship. If you think you're going to win a state championship as a team, you're in the back talking with your buddies. No. Mental reps if you're not in, right? You guys got to be chomping at the bit to get reps. While the GBs kept working, that's just what the rest of the defense did, as they got together to practice some different blitzes in the playbook. It wasn't easy to get used to the different plays. But the linemen caught on quickly, and line coach Andy Brooks liked what he saw after coaching for the first time in three years. Good, better. Well, I'm here with offensive line coach Andy Brooks. Now, you were here back in 2016. What's different now coming back th three years later? Well, uh, back then I think we had a, uh, you know, a very 
um, well-known line, a line that had been playing together for, for a long time. And uh, you know, some things that we built, and, and uh, but we had a really uh, solid group of kids coming into the season, I think. Um, we have a lot of young players this year, and uh, I've been you know, very, very uh, you know, pleased with what I've seen so far. A ton of effort. Um, they're buying into all the technique and, and everything else that, that we're teaching. Uh, the, the, uh, the kids have just running hard all day and, and given everything they have. And uh, the technique is surprisingly good. They're very coachable. I think we're going to uh, surprise a lot of people. We're not the biggest line crew out there. We're not the, uh, the most senior line crew out there. But uh, I really expect a lot of good things from these mm -hmm. kids. Now, are there any specific sophomores or juniors didn't get as much time last year that stood out today? You know, it's, it's really hard to tell. Um, like, like you said, I'm, I'm back to the program for the first time in a couple of years. And, um, you know, so the, uh, the seniors, I, I saw them as, as freshmen um, mm -hmm. and sophomores, um, rather. And uh, so, you know, what I see, the growth in these kids, you know, they're, they're now, uh, you know, fantastic. You know, they're football smart and uh, they're, they're coaching up the younger kids. Um, so, you know, you get, you get kids like, um, you know, you're Johnny Fontecchio and, and, uh, and um, Ryan Carmody and, and, uh, and uh, Ocknos, they're, you know, they're teaching the other kids. They, they, they like to share their knowledge. I think that's great. The other kids are, are picking it up. Um, get a lot of a big, a strong junior class full of linemen. Uh, so it's going to be a, a really interesting uh, battle for, to see who gets on the field on Friday night. But, you know, they're all getting their shots, and uh, I like what I'm seeing so far. So uh, the good news about that is, you know, if you do have a, a situation where, where someone can't make, can't get on the field, whether an injury or, or something else, I think next guy up mentality works really well uh, here because we have a lot of kids who can all play, all do a job, and, and I think they're all going to see a lot of playing time. The linebackers had a good day in their own drills as well. Hey, same thing with you right there. Right when you get around that bag, your eyes should be up, ready to make a play. Because you get after that block, what are you looking for? The back. run back with the ball, right? You get a tackle, how are you going to do it if you're like this? Check out. Check out. All right, so now let's work. What we're going to do is get on this side. I want you here. And it's going to be kind of like it's a reach block, okay? So you're going to come up, you're going to hit it with the three, the five, drop it here, and then get off it and get on. Okay? So it's just working more for translation. And you want to take it easy. Oh, yeah, that move with Let's go. Well, now, Carmody, step up. Oh, no, Tater Tot. You just got to step back. Zosti, go again. All right. You got it, man. Yes, Zosti. Yes, Zosti. Go. Yes, go. Yes, go. Yes, go. Oh, go. He's got a lot of stuff. <laughs> good, good, good. Last yeah, one, last one. Zosti got Come on, come on. While the linemen stuck together, the team began some seven on seven plays. Stay tuned for more from day one practice in episode three of Gonk Knox. Defensive drills had wrapped up, and it was time to play some seven on seven football. On day one, most of everything clicked for the offense. All three QBs, senior Riley Greenwald, junior Jeff Valentine, and sophomore Coleman Hossie had some big moments. All right, Green line, left tackle, Devin Monty, left guard, Jolly, center, Carmody, right guard, John Fon, right tackle, Cole Brooks, second group, left tackle, Octos, left guard, Troy Monty, center, Coffee, right guard. Colton Lane, we need a right guard. Colton Lane's not ready. Hey, where's that? Uh, where's that? Uh, Tater Tot. Tater Tot, right guard, right tackle, Spataro. Okay, that's the first and second group for line. All right, first group for skills. Riley, we got X, Jeffrey on, Y, B, B. Four back, Ray Del Rey, three back, Rio, two back, Alessi, second group, Jeff at Q, X is McKenna, Skangus, Y, four back, Steven, three back, Pedro, two back, Connolly. All right, everybody else is going to rotate and get some reps too, so be ready. Make sure you're watching the group in front of you. Junior captain and fullback, Rio Ferguson, anchored the backfield. Good. 
He did get help from Ryan Connolly. Pedro Ribeiro, Ray Del Rey, and others. Many receivers, both on the outside and in the slot, had great moments, including the Kalesi. Other receivers, such as Tom Jeffreyon, Ada McKenna, and Jason Levin also stepped up. But Derek Blanchard had the biggest day of all. Last year, Blanchard was primarily a tight end as he played in two tight end sets with Chris Patience, who has since transferred. This year, he has not only gotten work at tight end, but also as a wide receiver and defensive back. He has excelled as a route runner and a pass catcher. Prior to practice, the team voted Blanchard the third captain. So I'm here with Derek Blanchard Wide receiver, tight end, defensive back. He was just named the third captain for the team. How does that feel being the captain? Uh, it feels really good being elected by my teammates because I know they're putting a lot of trust in me with this job. So I'm really excited to lead the team and help hopefully collect a lot of W's this year with the boys. And on the field, you're trying some new positions, a little wide receiver, a little defensive back, also keeping some of the tight end reps. How are you feeling about your performance today with all those? Uh, it's really, spots? it's, it hasn't been as difficult as I thought it would be making the change to defensive back from defensive line. Uh, still got a ton to learn, but um, Coach Notice is working with me really well, and I hope to eventually get up to a really good um, tempo, I guess you could say, and just keep playing well. What do you feel like your biggest strength was today? Um, today, I feel like my biggest strength was knowing my assignments on offense. I felt the offense was moving the ball really well. Our quarterbacks were throwing really good balls, and overall, it was just really fun to be out there with my friends. A lot of wide receiver standouts, both in the slot and on the outside. Oh, definitely. And lastly, slightly different motto this year. It's we all we got, we all we need. What does that mean to you? Um, to me, it just means that no one's really looking at us as a big threat to do any real damage or go find the playoffs this year. So basically the model means that we're all the people we have and we're the only ones that believe in us. So we have to be the ones that can really do it. And we're the ones that we also only really need. So hopefully we're going to have a really good season, um, get a lot of looks. Mm -hmm. And hopefully you can be a big part of that. I hope to be. Can't wait to see. Rafael Gutierrez also had a great catch. As a sophomore, he has already stood out in the slot and made a name for himself. As coach said, this offense looked pretty good, but the way to win football games is with good blocking, good tackling, and good defense. Skills the team will continue to work at throughout camp. However, the team finished off day one's practice with some conditioning. Hey, good job today. A lot of information was thrown at you, right? Offensively and defensively. Pretty good job picking it up, right? But we want to go faster every single day. So tomorrow, for pre-practice, we're going to be out there doing the, the, the buck series, the trap, the buck, and the boot. All right, quarterbacks, we got to we gotta work on our steps. Three backs, we got to make sure we're going to the right side on the fakes or getting the ball. And if you're not getting the ball, always fake with two hands. We have to be very deceptive with that. Does that, does that make sense? Yes, okay. Good job. Good. Brooksy. I love these guys. Yeah. Yeah. I love these guys. Know you your assignment. Study. Memorize. Good. Oh, and hydrate. Good job. Fake whispers yeah. to the warrior. A storm is coming. I am the storm! Good job. Yeah. Yeah. Hurricane Fee! Hurricane Fee! Hey! Put your helmets on. Yes, coach! Get down, get down, get down, get down, get down, get down. Everybody's jumping in. Be ready to jump in. Sean, 
get in. Octos, get in. Ian, get in. Donald, get in. Hey, we are. What's our slogan? I caught up with senior captain Nicolesi after practice. So I'm here with senior captain, wide receiver, and strong safety Nicolesi. So pretty good practice overall. What's one thing you thought you did well today? Um, coverage was a little rocky today, but I feel like uh, I was playing a little bit of running back today. It's a newer position for me, so I feel like I did my best in that position that I could. Do you feel confident in being able to play two positions on offense, both running back and wide receiver? I do, I do. It's just an extra challenge that I'm ready to take on. Um, I'm looking to have fun this year, and that's uh, how I'm going to do it. And how do you feel you did defensively aside from the coverage? Um, defensively, we've done really well. I feel like I did pretty well, hold my own. But of course, there's always things to work on. Got to keep going at it for the rest of the season. And with all the new offense, new defense, do you feel like you've adjusted well? Oh yeah, we've uh, implemented it from the past years. It's not brand new, so I'm just looking to regain everything that I've had before. I also caught up with head coach Taylor Allen. So I'm here with head coach Taylor Allen. We are fresh off the first practice of the 2019 Algonquin football season. What are some things you noticed that you liked today? Um, I thought the kids picked up really well with our new in, uh, installs for both uh, offense and defense. Um, also, really surprised at, at you know how smart some of our kids are. You know, um, Algonquin's a great school. We take academics very serious, uh, but. I think what, what people overlook is we're not really a football school uh, right now, and we're looking to get that back. Um, in 2016, we went to the district championship game. We're going back. You know, our, one of our goals is to go back this year, uh, but this is a great start for us, you know. Yeah. Um, learning learning some, some base offensive plays, our base defense. Uh, kids are flying around today, so I was really happy to see that. I think in addition to some very smart students, there's some pretty football smart people around here as well. And you had talked earlier about the quarterback battle and the defensive back battle. How do you think things progressed there today? Yeah, uh, once you start putting in your the offense that you, you want to run you know, this, this year, you see what quarterbacks do certain things better than the other. Um, so I was really surprised with how quickly Jeff Valentine picked up the under center stuff. Riley's uh, progressing a little bit more uh, slower than Jeff, but he's, he's still a very quick learner. Uh, what, what Riley does better than Jeff is he, in, in the spread offense and the shotgun set, he's, he can read a defense and get the ball to a spot in a timely fashion. Uh, Jeff, he's very smart, but he's, he's not very timely with the football just yet. So <clears throat> it's a little bit of a, you know, they're kind of balancing out. Um, but we're going to find out next week who our starter is. Yeah, and a big help today, the wide receivers, a lot of different receivers both in the slot and on the outside dominating today. Who do you feel stood out especially? Um, I think you look at Derek Blanchard's frame on the outside, split out as a, as a wide receiver. That's pretty dangerous because you can go deep. You can have him cut inside on a deep end, find a hole. Um, <clears throat> I think you look at the slot, you got Ralph, that's a pretty quick kid. Nicolesi is very hard to cover on anything quick. Um, so I'm excited to use those guys. And then you got Tom Jeffrey on, on the outside, opposite of Derek Blanchard, that you can do just about anything with too. So that's four receivers right there that the defense has to, they have to cover. Um, if they don't, we can we can certainly expose at least you know one, one part of the defense just by game planning. And since you're trusting Gutierrez in the slot, then Nicolesi has also gotten some reps as a running back, so also a very versatile player. Yeah, absolutely. Nick's been great so far this whole summer. Uh, I told him that I wanted to try him out at running back, and he has not said no. Uh, so he's, he's excited for the opportunity, and uh, I'm excited for, to see what he can do. It was a strong practice for the T-Hawks, but this is only the beginning. The next morning, 
the team would have to get there early for practice and team photos before a day of rest on Sunday. Stay tuned for Day 2 action in Episode 4 of Gonk Knox. Good. No, it's fine. That's what you want. That's what you want. Aggressive. Can't be passive on D. Let's go. The coaches were focused on improving on day one in all aspects. With the offense dominating, the team focused on defense and special teams more for day two. The special teams needs to find some new personnel as kicker and punter Rory Caffrey and returner Sam Crane both graduated this past June. As they hinted at in practice the day before, they experimented with different kickers, returners, and other personnel. Most of everyone on the team got the chance to show off their special team skills. Wow. The team did get to some 7-on-7s, seven seven, but the focus in these was on defense. Nicolesi did have some pretty impressive catches, though. It was head coach Taylor Allen's job to put together an offense that can beat the top defensive players. The DBs worked hard in their own drills and learned a lot from Coach Tyrone Notice leading up to the 7-on-7s. Seven seven. I mic'd him up for a large portion of practice. Coach Notice is one of the more vocal coaches on the team, and it is his job to prepare the DBs for in-game action. The group does not have the same amount of experience as last year's DBs, so they still have a lot to learn. So go! Go! Good. No, it's fine. That's what you want. That's what you want. Go! Go! Hey, secure the tackle. Hey, gentlemen, pay attention! Hey, Freddy's my receiver! I'm back, Tyler, excuse me. Right, I'm here, to the man! You know what's the difference? Do you know what's the difference? Because half of you guys have done this. What is this accomplishing? Through the man, please. Good, better. Good, better. The ball will, trust me, end game, it will be like a robot. Trust me. <laughs> Secure the tackle, Mike, through the man. Not through the arms, the man. The man. So go. Go. Good. What you want? Perfect, Tiago. Perfect. So go! Go! Good. It could happen at three, it could happen early. All right? So if he takes one, two, three, take one, two, three. He takes one, two, three. What are we still in? Stay or, stay or switch. Good. Now he decides to come here. He decides to go under. What is it now? Hey, slow yourselves down and relax. Got it? You guys are panicking. You're like, ah, it's going to be a switch. It's going to be a stay. Ah, uh, ah, uh, switch. Stay, stay, stay. That's what you guys are doing. Trust. Whatever you say first, stick with it. And we'll fix it later. Don't get me wrong. I'm going to be angry about it now, but I'd rather you say, Coach, I chose stay because I want you told me to stick with it. I'll accept that answer. I'm like, all right, cool. I'll fix it. Got it? Outside leverage, Thiago. Thank you. Make sure you can still see two. This. You're cocking so you can see two. Here we go. Ready, ready to go. You gotta stay, gotta stay. Good. Let's go. Good. Hey, you're outside. He should be coming right to you. You don't let him get outside. You're already there, you're here. All it is is this. Oh, okay. Race to go! Hey, if you call stay, then go! You see him go like this, go! I'll take being aggressive than being passive. I can live with that. That we can fix. Hurry up, we're running a lap. Safety, hurry up! Everyone should know every position. It's all the same. You can't say switch and then don't switch. 
That's a problem. Race to go. Good. Good. Bring it up. Hey, let's go be perfect, please. All right. Let's get our stuff together right now and focus up. I don't like to start. Let's finish strong. Got it? Let's go, Tony. Stevie's on three. Don't forget to slide out. One, two, three, Stevie. Let's go. No. No. You could have switched it. You could have switched it, but you're late. Could have switched it, but you're late. Stay. Hey, Jeff. It's just what we did over there, except it's at an angle now. You got to come through. Come through the man. Hey, through the man. Through the man. Because guess what? He caught that. He's gone. We just did it. However, they okay. showed some promise and made a few good plays in seven on seven. Hey, that's good. That's better. Stay, just stay, just stay. Good. That's perfect, AJ. Raph, scoot up. Scoot up, like be right in front of him. Like, mess up the timing. Now it's our stuff, so mess up the timing, please. Hey, don't get eager. You're already stepping. Let it come to you, bro. You did a great job at camp, all right, at Blackstone. You were like, oh, I can just hang here. All right, let it come to you, bro. All right, don't get over anxious. It's gonna happen, just, right? Job. Check, 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 check. It's Budge, right front. Derek, inside. Back up, Derek, back up, Derek, good. Good hand on. Late. You're late. Hey, you two, Nate, Derek, Levin, you know one guy has to come in, one guy has to come. It's patient. Patience. That's the key. That's the key. Let's go. Hey, make a call, we'll fix it. Let's go. Trust. While the DBs and linebackers took on Coach Allen's offense, the linemen continued to work on blocking, blitzing, and more. Unfortunately, Chris Ochnos, one D lineman, went down during practice with a lower body injury. Here's the goal. We're going to do about five to seven minutes of just gassing you guys out. Empty the tank. You guys have a full day to recover tomorrow, okay? After we do this, we're gonna break it down real quick. We're gonna go inside, get changed, look all fresh in our uniforms, right? Yes, yeah. Yeah. We're gonna take a good team photo. Yeah, we are. The Teahawks received their jerseys for the season that morning, and they took team photos after practice. Due to photo day, the team wrapped up practice early, but they finished with some intense conditioning Line guys, you're doing push-ups until the skill guys finish. Skill, go. The team will return to the practice field on Monday, August 19th. And on August 20th, they'll be putting on uppers, which is a helmet as well as shoulder and chest pads. Take your helmet off. Give me a good horseshoe here. Oh, we see good. Good height, mosh pit height. Good. Awesome. All right, boys. Make sure you guys hydrate a lot this weekend, all right? Because next week is going to be a little bit hotter at the start, right? Monday and Tuesday is going to be about 90. We're pushing practice back so we can beat that heat. Uh, later on in the day, all right? Can I take care of you guys, all right? Monday is our last day in helmets. Tuesday, we put uppers on. All right, I'm excited for that because I get to see who wants to be uh, a football player. Okay, we talked about that. There's a difference between being a football player and playing football. 
Okay? I'll explain that a little bit more on Tuesday, okay, when we strap them up. Alright? Finny, got anything? Whoa. Uh -oh. I want you guys to sing, okay? Yes. Are we ready? Can we Let's go. We're singing. Ready? Hail to the conquered heroes. Hail to the victors valley. Hail, hail, our conquering leaders of the watch. Good job. Line guys, a continued uh, good effort again today. We threw a lot at you today. Uh, a lot more head work, and we're a little bit uh, sloppy, a little bit messy. We're going to continue to work it in the classroom, we'll work in the field. I'm liking what I'm seeing overall, okay? I can't wait to see you guys in uppers. I, I can see who's paying attention, is doing the studying. Study the playbooks. It's not that hard, okay? If you have any question to what position or positions I want you to study, please see me after practice. When we're done here, I want all the line guys on that sled. we got to get that out of the uh, long grass over there, okay? Sure. Guys, you keep focusing on the fundamentals, the little things, like Coach said, the playbook. Get in the playbook, study it, focus on the little things. Um, uh, next week, we get to put the pads on, that's when the fun starts, okay? Keep working hard. Griff, uh, best play today was 25 power, and because it looked so fluid, everybody knew their assignments. The goal is to get every play like that, and this is how well that was with Durant. So that's the goal for every single series that we have, mm -hmm. study. Uh, if our goal is to get better every day, I didn't really feel like we did that today. There was too many questions, too many guys yelling at each other. we got to work together. And you, you guys are all working hard out here, but study your playbooks and help each other out, all right? Yelling at each other is not going to get anything done. Absolutely. Uh, guys, focus, 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 and communicate with each other. Especially on defensive side, you guys got to communicate. you got to be focused on your assignment. And do your assignment. Don't worry about somebody else's assignment because if you overcompensate for somebody else's, that's two people out of position. Then you get three, four, five. Do your job. Don't worry about the other guy's job. Rowan, anything before me? <laughs> um, listen, on defense, you got to get that improvement every single day, right? 1% better every day. If you have questions on an install or your responsibility on a certain call, don't hesitate to come before or after practice and ask, okay, if you have questions. No sense in lining up when you don't know what's going on. Ask. We, we good? Coach. Hey, on your knees. On your knees. On your knees. Take a knee. Hey, every day we got to be excited to be here, right? Yes, coach. Every single day. Yes, coach. We all we got. Let's go. Before team photos began, I spoke briefly with head coach Taylor Allen. I'm here with head coach Taylor Allen. So over the last two days, what are some things that you've really liked about the team so far? Um, so far, uh, the offensive side of the ball, uh, these kids are picking up the playbook really quickly, and it shows on the field. So they're getting in their playbooks, they're learning at home, they're doing their homework, right? And uh, it's really showing on the, on the uh, practice field. Defensively, they're flying around, uh, flying around a little bit faster, a little bit quicker. Uh, so we definitely like that as a coaching staff. A uh, little bit less thinking because they, they know their, uh, their uh, responsibilities and assignments. So we're, we're pumped to, to put the pads on on Tuesday, see, see what, uh, what all this work uh, can you know, come into uh, fruition. Now the offense looked great, everything clicked. What's the number one thing you're looking to work on heading into Tuesday? Uh, we want to. We just want to be faster on offense. The offensive line and the running backs have to be quicker in the backfield. Um, as long as the offensive line knows their responsibilities, every single run play will hit uh, really hard and quick for us. So that's what I'm going to be harping on in the offensive meetings. Mm -hmm. Defensive meetings, we have to. Uh, we have to be smarter. We have to communicate a little bit better. The defensive backs. You noted there was a positional battle there. Anyone who stood out today, you think? Uh, not yet. We're still waiting for somebody to step up and, uh, you know, claim their spots. So Yeah, especially with Sam Crane on his way out. There's going to be someone that needs to be the next man up. Yeah, absolutely. Sam Crane was a great uh, communicator. Uh, he knew exactly where everybody needed to be on the field. And, uh, you know, he always made the right calls. Uh, whether or not we, we executed, uh, that's a different story. But 
you know, uh, he's, he's a big uh, piece of the puzzle that we have to, you know, uh, make, make some moves for. Stay tuned for coverage of Algonquin's return to the practice field in Episode 5 of Gonk Knox. On Monday, August 19th, the last day before putting on uppers, Algonquin looked great in all aspects of practice. But the coaches made sure that the players didn't let it get to their heads as the next practice would be crucial in determining who was here to be a football player. Hey, Saturday was ugly. I said we need to improve. We were a lot better today. Build on this, though. Don't get complacent, all right? The defense continued to improve. Coach Brooks was especially proud of the line performance. Uh, really proud of the line guys today. We, we did a huge review session. Indy was absolutely on point. Pre practice was on point. The, uh, the team session, uh, session was absolutely outstanding. Everyone coming together, skills, players, and line crew looking like a team. That was like a, a really heartwarming kind of uh, practice for me personally. I, I really love seeing that come together. Hawkins uh, inside, uh, inside, uh, act. Good, right there. Ready, One step to your right, Matt. For the offensive drills, the team focused on ball handoff and handling techniques. Two standouts in the run drills were junior captain and fullback Rio Ferguson, as well as senior running back Tiago Philadelphia. This is Tiago's last year with the team, as he will be graduating in May, so it's great to see him get these opportunities to practice his skills after putting in a lot of work in the offseason. The team worked the drills so fast that Rio and Tiago could both benefit from reps. The coaching staff reinforced how important ball handling is all of camp. Turnovers always are big factors in games, and both Rio and Tiago had some good practice time that helped build a muscle memory that is a huge factor in making them more comfortable with ball exchanges. Fellas, remember what we talked about? Ball with the backs. Yeah. Yeah. Don't forget uh, alignments and stances. Remember, guards head on the um, center tip, okay? While running and handoff techniques were the focus on offensive drills, quarterback Riley Greenwald did throw the ball well, especially on a deep ball to wide receiver and tight end Derek Blanchard. The team wanted to finish practice on a high note, and they were successful in doing so. Real quick, we talked earlier about being a football player and just playing football, right? Do you guys think you were football players today? Absolutely. All right, that's good. Tomorrow, we're in uppers. The team had practice jerseys ready to go with upper pads. Coach Allen is learning more about his players every day, and once the team puts on uppers and thuds it up a bit, things should become even more clear. Find out if you're gonna hold uh, hold that standard, right? That standard nice and high if you're a football player. If you just wanna play football, we're gonna find out tomorrow. Alright? It's not full contact, it's it's done. We'll thud it up a little bit, about 15, 20 minutes tomorrow. What exactly does studying it up mean to you? Um, just you know, light hits, uh, using good technique. Um, you know, using using your shoulder pads, wrapping up on, on tackles, obviously not bringing them down because we're not in full pads. But, you know, kind of just set the pads and, and get used to a little bit of contact. I think that's huge. I think uh, the MIA does a great job at setting a, a schedule for every team to follow. And uh, tomorrow is our first day in uppers, so uh, we'll have two days in, in uppers. And then on Thursday, we'll go full pads. So the kids are excited for it. Coaches are, too. And uh, we're, we're kind of just off and, uh, off and running with it. Thudding it up means put more work in. you got to show your, what you're, like, you're made of, especially in pads, because, like, right now it's nothing. Like, we don't have pads on, we only have helmets, and, like, it's basically, like, you, when you put those pads on, you got to go off. Like, bumping, like, not full. Thud, baby. Just, you know, the stuff we've been doing now? Like, kind of grabbing our pads. Make sure we're going to do it tomorrow. We're going to do it full speed. Got it? We'll give you guys a little touch on but we're going to find out who really wants to play football and to be a football player. I'll be good with that. Let's go. Let's go. It's Spinny. Okay, Finn. Okay, Finn. Yeah. Okay, Finn. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Oh, yeah. Woo. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I said it the other day, but all 11 guys have an assignment. If one guy breaks down, the whole play messes up. We saw it in a couple plays today. All 11 knew their assignment, and the floodgates open. Know your assignment. Boss. Control the aggression, gentlemen. Control the aggression. Listen, I talked to defense after sevens. Eliminate the excuses. Ask yourself today, did you get 1% better? That's right, boy. Wow. Put your helmets on. Yeah. Don't get up, don't get up. Move, 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 I saw Chris Ochnos back on the field. He brings a lot of positive energy, and everyone was excited to see him out there after missing some practice earlier in the week. I spoke with Ralph Gutierrez and Eli Casabo after practice. You guys think you earned an interview with Doc Knox? Yeah, I thought so too. Eli won a game of rock, paper, scissors in order to go first. Later, I spoke with coaches Tyrone Notice and Taylor Allen. I'm here with Eli Casabo, defensive back and wide receiver. So, a lot of the coaches noted big improvement from today, from Saturday. Where do you feel you improved the most? Um, what I've been doing, I've been working on my footwork a lot because you're going to need that to elevate your game as a DB because that's very important. Where do you think the team has improved as a whole? The team has improved a lot since last year. I'm feeling really positive about this year, but um, and my, my mindset's always never satisfied, so I'm always working, I'm always pushing myself. Uh, I never feel like I can give 100%, but unless it's effort, then I'm always doing that. And lastly, how do you feel uh, Coach Notice has improved your game as a whole, working with him? Oh yeah, he definitely has. He's been pushing me every day. He's been going hard on me, but not too harsh. I feel like I've gotten way better because of him. And um, he's always making us work hard as DBs. And it's just, it's just great. I'm here with slot receiver Ralph Gutierrez. Now, how do you feel you improved today compared to Saturday? I think I've improved a lot, like, especially because TA, like how he said, he's been working with me. I've been, my routes have been sharper. My catches, I dropped a lot of passes in the first day, and I feel like I've improved a lot in that. Playing against the DBs, coached by Coach Notice, what is that like? Well, Coach is a good coach. Like, when he takes his stuff seriously, and like, I, it's hard. And you learn to compete, and that's, I think it's, it's good for me. Full pads later this week and uppers tomorrow. Where do you think you're looking to improve the most? I think definitely because of the pads. I think it's harder to catch the ball, but I think I'll definitely like be improving into that and more running the ball. Basically, yeah. And you've had some pretty good catches already. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've improved a lot, and especially at throw, like when they throw the ball up, it's like a one on one. You got to go up for it. Like, it doesn't matter. You just, like, you, you can never think it's like too far. You just got to keep running for it. It's going to be a different experience even further when you put the rest of the pads on on Thursday. I think the hardest part is just tomorrow, just the uppers. I think the lowers isn't really like a big part of like, it's just like little pads. The, the biggest part is the uppers. So do the uppers make it harder to practice? How much heavier are they? I think it definitely makes it like more difficult, but uh, like every other football player, you just gotta get used to So like when we put, up, when we put the helmets on, we just gotta get used to them. So tomorrow you'll be putting on uppers. What's the hardest part of that, you think? Uh, the hardest part about that is, you know, getting the athletes to, you know, actually more to be physical because uh, we haven't had an opportunity to be physical, so I know they're excited and we're excited. Like I said, I can't wait to see the pads on tomorrow. It was much better practice this Saturday, according to many of the coaches. Who do you think stood out from the DBs today? Um, I think all of them stood out today. Um, they said we still need to get some blocks of iron. We're really young. I'm just excited to see what we can do. Putting on uppers tomorrow, so it's a crucial day. And what do you think is the hardest part of that? Uh, finding out who wants to play in that full pads, or what they used to say, or who wants to be in this who doesn't. That's really the hardest part of it. Coach, I was 
saying there's a difference between football player and, some, and playing football. Uh, there absolutely is. You know, some people just want to wear the jersey, and there's people on the sideline, most people want to play on Friday nights. And you're putting full pads on on Thursday. Which day do you think is harder, Tuesday or Thursday, especially for the new players? Um, I'd say, uh, you know, Thursday, you know, it's, you know, you have to put on full pads and you know, have to get out there and actually busy with the physical the whole day. Um, it's absolutely raining, absolutely taxing for everybody. So, can't wait to see it. It was a hot day, but you were able to beat the heat and the results as a lot of the coaches said, we're pretty good. Big improvement from Saturday. What areas do you think the team improved in the most? Um, I think the run game for sure. We're installing a lot of uh, different counters and, and uh, you know just really harping on our blocking scheme up front. So the kids are really picking up on that. Uh, tomorrow's going to be a big test for us, but today was a huge success on the offensive side of the ball. Tomorrow is going to be a little more difficult because the uppers means a lot of weight and there's a little bit of pressure there too. What do you think is the hardest part of putting on uppers? Um, I think kind of just getting used to, to putting pads on. You know, uh, the coaching staff is going to be really smart about um, you know conditioning and, and things like that. We'll probably take the pads off at the end of practice to, to get some conditioning done. But uh, we want to see what the kids can do uh, and just thud. You know, we're going to thud it up a little bit. Um, but, you know, obviously not the entire practice. We want to get them acclimated to, uh, you know, wearing just shoulder pads and a helmet. Any standouts in particular today? I know the DBs had a better day than Saturday and also the running backs. Yeah, I think the, if you look at the standouts, uh, Rio Ferguson, I mean, he's, he's gotten a lot faster since last year. Uh, his hands have improved tremendously. Uh, so as a play caller, you get excited when you see kids like Rio. What are you trying to do at the end of practice today with the offense? Um, at the end, we're trying to get as many reps as possible with that first group, you know, in quotes, first group. We want to see uh, who wants to, to, to play, uh, you know, on our offense. And the more reps that you get, the better you see who's, who's really here to compete at a high level. So if you can get them gassed a little bit, um, you know, getting, getting those high, high volume of reps, um, you're going to see who, who's going to be ready for you on Friday night. So we're really, we're really starting to mold our offense right now. So that was a good test for the kids and even for the coaches because we got to stay on the ball with communication too. I know it's Thiago Philadelphia getting a lot more reps today. If he could pick it up and, uh, you know, f focus on getting better every day with the things that he needs to improve on with ball security and, uh, you know, reading cuts and, and hitting the holes, then he's going to play a lot for us, you know. So I'm excited to see what he can do. Stay tuned to see how the T-Hawks do on their first day in uppers in episode 6 of Gonk Knox. On Tuesday, August 20th, Algonquin put on uppers as well as their official practice jerseys for the first time. These would be the jerseys they wear at their scrimmage in Clinton that they will spend the week preparing for. Let's go. You're going against our offense because it's similar to what Clinton and Bartlett are going to run on Saturday. Good? Questions? Hey, let's go. Many of the players were excited to thud it up for the first time, but pads also add some extra challenges at practice. Players must be ready for man-to-man -man action and the increase in weight on their shoulders and chest. McAvoy, wrong way. Hey, you guys have shoulder pads on. Get used to blowing up cross please. Don't kill shot your teammates, but get used to blowing up cross -reach. Hey, good break up and go through him. There's nothing that doesn't say you can't through him to get the ball. Right? Until they call it the eye, you both do. The DBs saw a big improvement on Tuesday. Eli Kasaba had some great blocks and an interception during defensive 7-on-7s. Seven seven. The D-line took a bit to get adjusted to the more difficult blocking, but they enjoyed trying out some new, more physical drills and going one-on-one -on -one against other linemen for the first time. They did many of these drills during defensive 7-on-7s, seven seven, in which the focus is on linebackers and DBs. We mic'd up defensive coordinator Mark Allen for much of the defensive focus parts of practice. Hey, hey, when in doubt, stay. Right? Where, we're, where we get in trouble is if we switch late. Raph, you're getting caught up looking at one, and you're seeing him go and you're calling the switch. It's off of two. Hey, who's the overhang on the left? You gotta be on his hip. You can't, you can't give him a cushion and trail him. Jump his hip and go. Get in the huddle. Get in the huddle. Get in the huddle. Sharp huddle. Let's go. Hey! Get in the huddle. Let's go. 
Would have been a sack, but I'm okay with it. John, instead, don't hit the guard. Hit that A gap tight, and you won't even have to mess with him, and you got you got you can clear run on the quarterback. Right? It would have been a sack anyway. Golly! Come on, man. Stay up. I like I like you getting there and playing on it. Be smart. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, that's what it is. You go inside out because you have cutback, but you can also adjust your angle to play. Okay? Yeah. Who was in the interior D-line? You went too wide. You went off his butt, but you went D-gap. You got to go A-gap. Go! Go! Good job. Good job. While the players took a break for water, the coaches discussed what they would do next. No, they're going indie group team. Then the team shifted focus to the offense. Derek Blanchard had the two best catches of the day, diving for a deep ball on one play and showing off some excellent route running after catching another deep ball on the next. When you see big plays in practice like that, especially when the offense is uh, you know, going a little bit slower with the tempo, we need a little pick-me-up. Derek's uh, always, he's always done that. Every, every year I've coached him, he's always had big plays that kind of spark the offense. So if we can do that during the game, that's, that's ideal. Ralph Gutierrez and Aiden McKenna also had some nice catches. Despite a strong day on Monday, the O-line struggled at times during their first day in upper pads, but Coach Brooks was ready to move on and focus on a strong day Wednesday. Brooksy, O-line, I was, I was very disappointed today. I'm, I'm not going to uh, convince any words here. Um, I'm a very honest person, okay? You guys need to do better. You need to do better tomorrow. You, you were on a trail. You know, you knew what you were doing. Uh, classroom work was good yesterday. We looked good in bags. Everything was flying. Okay, you have to learn your plays. You know, I've been I've been having your back, trying to keep you looking good. Okay, you know, you, you just didn't show up today. Um, we had the defensive period where the scout team was four fifths of my offensive line. Okay, that I had out there as the ones. Uh, no one's earned the starting position yet, so we're still working on that. Okay, but we may make some changes, okay? You guys have to toughen up. You guys got to be mentally tough and focus up. Go home and all study your playbooks tonight. I don't care if you're the ones, twos, or twelves, okay? If I call for linemen, okay, I don't want you guys standing behind the line, quaking in your shoes, afraid that Johnny Fontecchio is going to tap you on the shoulder or anything else. Get in a position where you can make the team better, okay? That's everybody. So it's not just the ones who need to learn their playbook. It's everybody. Do not embarrass yourselves further tomorrow. That's on you. Right, hey guys, pay attention. It's going to be quick. Hey, defense and offense, especially defense. All right, offensive line, you have to get in your playbook. All right, even even the running backs, you have to get in your playbook. Right? We knew this was going to happen, right? Because sometimes everybody goes caveman, right? When you guys have pads on, it's awesome to go against bags, but when you actually have a live guy going against you. Things change a little bit. Did you see that today? Yes, good. Okay. The bags don't move. Men move, right? Okay, we have a lot of good film that we're going to review as a coaching staff tonight. We're going to arrive here at 10 a.m. Okay? 10 a.m. Are we good with that? Yes, sir. Do not be late. Do not be late. Got anything? Keep working. Good day to put on pads. Every, every day, you got to get better. Okay, defense is probably the best group we had with P period. Okay, you got to get better though. You got to keep working. Okay, you got to know the material. Ask if you don't know. Okay, guys, let's keep working hard. Okay, got a scrimmage on Saturday. Get better every day. Prepare for the scrimmage. Wash? Nope, nothing today. Pat? Can say it better than Brooks, he did. Like that. Yeah, Chris? Just, uh, offensive period, I thought it was very sloppy. Got to clean that up. And uh, quarterbacks, I, I noticed, each. making kids going where they are, but you got to be more vocal. You've got to speak up and take charge. Finish. You have 100 days. Today is the 100th day until Thanksgiving. 100 days. That's all you got left for you seniors playing football. Think about that. 100 days. This is the countdown. 99 tomorrow. 
They click off fast. Hey, a little sloppy today, but we got to end on a high note, right? Let's go. Let's go. What we got? We all Listen, we're just going to break it down on me. The word of the day was what? Can we do that, though? Nah. Let's get better tomorrow. You have to compete every day. Is that clear? Let's go. Compete on three. One, two, three. Compete. Good. After practice, I spoke with junior captain, linebacker, and fullback Rio Ferguson, senior QB Riley Greenwald, and head coach Taylor Allen. First day in uppers, how did it feel today? Really good. It was get, good getting back to thumping a little bit and wrapping up and not being just off and just doing walkthroughs and all that. So it was really nice. I felt like our defensive period went really well. Um, I think we improved on the three days before, and I think um, we're really looking good this year. Yeah, and on the offensive side of the ball, what do you think was your biggest strength today? Biggest strength? Um, I'd say our pass game is looking pretty good. Um, we need, uh, we're having a little trouble, but we'll we'll figure it out. We'll be all good. And where do you think you've thrived personally today on both positions? Um, both positions, I feel like I'm making good cuts. Um, I feel like I'm following my my good O lineman's blocks, and I feel like we're all coming together. So I'm here with quarterback Riley Greenwald. So, how do you think the offense did today in their first day in uppers? Um, offensively, I think we need to know our plays a little bit better. Uh, everyone's just got to figure it out, to be honest with you. A lot of just confusion up there. And I think with time, we'll get it and grasp everything that is being thrown at us. And I'm confident that we'll figure it out. So a huge thing with quarterbacks is um, chemistry with their receivers. And... Who are some receivers that you kind of just, um, you know where they're going, they know where you're going? Uh, I like all of my receivers. I like Ralph as my boy. He's the man out there. Derek, he's he's huge, so he's really easy to throw to. And I don't know, I just like everyone. I like sharing all the love to all my receivers. Mm -hmm. Derek Blanchard had some amazing catches today, that dive and grab. But one point and Nick Gillespie is another guy who had some pretty good catches as well yeah Nick is changing into more of a running back sort of role but still be able to throw him the ball in the flat and whatnot but he's another good target and how do you feel the team did as a whole like did you um, notice any improvement with the defense or uh, every day I noticed the defense from doing scout and all of that stuff and I think every day the defense gets better and better and DBs look better today. Uh, Eli had a great practice today. Eli's looking good too. Today was the first day in uppers. Who do you feel adjusted and were acting like football players as opposed to people who play football? Um, well, I think you look at Rio Ferguson, who's very used to being a football player. You know, I, some some kids in this world are born to play football. He's certainly one of them. Uh, but I think the entire team did a pretty good job uh, getting used to the, the pads. But uh, I think tomorrow, and especially Thursday, we're going to find out who really wants to be a football player. Mm -hmm. And how do you feel the defense did today? I noticed the DBs improved even further, and a lot of guys on defense stood out. Yeah, I think the DBs are definitely improving. I think Coach Notice is doing a great job with them in their individual periods. And I think when you, when you have a lot of teachable moments, uh, Tyrone does a great job at stopping, teaching, and then evaluating everything that happens and then reteaching it. And that's what we're doing in, you know, the entire preseason. We're, we're teaching it so we can be great, especially in our scrimmages. Uh, Saturday we play Clinton Bartlett again, uh, just like last year. So we're looking forward to that, and uh, we're getting better every day leading up to that. Yeah, and a lot of guys are starting fresh at the position. Derek Blanchard, he was a defensive end for most of his football f career, and now he's moving to DB. Yeah, Derek's a really quick learner, both on the offensive side and the defensive side. But I think defensively, he's going to be a hard guy to throw on just because of his frame, you know. And he's a receiver, so he's going to be a little bit of a ball hawk. You know, if he can uh, uh, learn how to uh, do a cover two a little bit better. I mean, I think he could be a man guy too, but if he's a cover two guy and really learn that, he could be a great uh, overhang safety for us. Yeah. Now that players have started to get adjusted to uppers, Wednesday and Thursday will be very telling as to who's ready to go.
Wednesday is the team's last day in uppers. They put on full pads Thursday. Not bad. Can we improve? Yes. Okay, will we improve? Yes, the more we work at it. Film review this morning that we did with the DBs and linebackers, we used better alignments, we had better coverage, and better communication, but you got to get better every time we get out here. Okay? You got a scrimmage on Saturday, we got a lot to work on in three days. Okay? And you got another one next week, and we get rolling, right? The more we go, we're in pads now, you got to get moving quicker and learning faster. Okay? Because we're going to start whittling down who's who, who's going to get the reps, and who's going to be starting groups in certain situations. We good? Yes, sir. Keep up the good work, gentlemen. Let's go. Three, three. Hey, swarm on three. One, two, three. Four. Stay tuned to see how they do in episode seven of Gonk Knox. Since the team got themselves adjusted to upper pads on Tuesday, August 20th, the Algonquin Tomahawks improved in all areas on Wednesday, August 21st. They started off practice by thudding it up in a series of head-to-head -head matchups known as Set the Tone. And as Coach Allen says, it sets the tone for practice. We, we started doing Set the Tone um, drills with you know some of our key players. We wanted to uh, send out a couple key matchups that we thought would uh, you know really get everybody excited. Oh, so you see. and Brett Jolly going against each other. Everybody got excited for that. Brett Jolly. Wow. Yeah. Rio Ferguson. Whoa. Oh. Oh. It's awesome. I love doing it. It's good competition. I went against Rio. A ton of fun. Love it. Um, Nick Alessi and then Eli Casabo went against each other because, I mean, if Eli wants to compete on Friday nights, he's going to face kids just like Nick Alessi. So. Eli, he's playing on Friday nights. Uh, That's the type of kid you're going for. No one's stronger than you, Nick. Both of them uh, responded well. Uh, Brett Jolly and Eli are pretty young kids, but they're going up against upper, are going up, uh, against upperclassmen. So, good experience for them. You know, kind of just get, get to get isolated matchups like that. One of the closest matchups of the day was between tight end and defensive end Joe Skangas and wide receiver slash tight end and DB Derek Blanchard. Job setting the tone, all right. We're going O Indy, okay? Oh, Offensive individual. You guys know where you're supposed to go? Yes, coach. Riley, come here. Right here. You're just gonna get a drop. Okay? Here, you're gonna get a drop. Right? Sit in the pocket. You're gonna have pressure from either way. I'm gonna give you a, I'm gonna point, and you're gonna have to bail. So we either bail this way, throw it to Jeff, or you're gonna have to sit out and bail and throw it. Okay? Hey, fellas, it's the way 
you're pointing. I, if I point that way, you're gonna bail that way. If I point that way, you're gonna bail that way. Blanchard went on to have another huge day on both offense and defense, catching more deep balls successfully. On offense, Jason Levin and Aiden McKenna also stood up. Levin is a versatile player who succeeded in multiple roles. McKenna has gotten more reps as a junior and made some pretty good catches. He had a great jumping catch during 11 on 11. I feel like every day we're getting better. Uh, the entire team, me personally, I think I am too. What do you think is the one thing you want to work on going into full pads tomorrow? Uh, just technique of tackling, open field tackling, you know, being able to move around wearing the leggings too. Nick Olesi, Jack Rafferty, and Ralph Gutierrez also had some pretty good catches on Wednesday. The O-line saw significant improvement compared to Tuesday. They also tried out some new contact drills. Offensive line, defensive line struggled a bit yesterday. How do you feel they were today compared to yesterday? Uh, better. I mean, that's from film again and teaching in the classroom. But uh, we did a period where we're just going against uh, traffic barrels, right? So they, we walked to our... Uh, our blocking is, uh, assignments, right? So we're really slowing everything down for them. And then after that, if we get it right the first time, then we'll go full speed, and then we'll go on to the next play. So we're trying to uh, get a, a sense of mastery, if you will, for each play. Pick the any backer. Don't get so confused, right? Okay. So first guy. The first guy you see, most dangerous man. That's fine. And if I take him up, he's coming. Go! Good. Unfortunately, the increase in contact meant more injuries as several T-Hawks went down. A couple players who were resting or hurt played with offensive coordinator Bill Griffin's son, Joey. Joey loves football and always spends a couple days of his summer watching the team at practice. On defense, John Fontecchio, Eli Casabo, Rhett Jolly, and others continued to shine as they learned plenty from defensive coordinator Mark Allen and line coach Andy Brooks. Nobody Over pursuit, AJ. Call your huddle. All right. I need you on the field in your position. We call second group up. Where's my center in the second line group? I want you standing over there watching exactly what Brett Jolly is doing tonight, okay? I got that pull and I followed way oh, pretty far. Yeah. Ah! Should I just run on the quarterback? quarterback. If he blitzed, you'd be the quarterback. Yeah, oh! Pagani's outside, so he would have to step out. You're still, still over, so I just shift over and come you just, over the top. Oh! Ooh! Joey also played with his dad while the players were doing conditioning drills to end practice. Who knows, maybe we'll see Joey in a T-Hawks uniform at some point. Come on, bring it in, hey, let's go. Compete on three! One, two, three! Compete! After practice, I interviewed tackle and defensive lineman Brett Jolly. So, Coach Brooks wasn't happy with the performance for the O-line yesterday. How do you feel today compares to yesterday? I mean, we did good today. We watched film and broke down like our stances and everything, technique. I mean, we did pretty good today. We did awesome today, actually. You know, we I went home, studied my plays, so did the other linemen, and overall, just a good day. We just we got the ropes today. You know, it was more organized than yesterday. Feel, what's one area that you think you should um, work on going into Thursday? Um, I should work on my uh, 
pass blocking and run blocking and just overall being aggressive on the line. And I got to learn from Mike McFoy and John Fawn. They're one of the best, they're some of the best linemen on the team. And I'm trying to live up to that. So they're really good. So. Do you think you've improved with your aggression over the last few days? I have, I have, with the helps of Coach Brooks and stuff. And just also like having confidence in myself. And that gives me the aggression I need. How do you feel you adjusted to uppers? And are you feeling the same way about full pads? Yeah, I'm excited. I like, I like hitting people. And I'm excited for full pads because like we can tackle now and it makes the game just a little more fun and aggressive. I also spoke with head coach Taylor Allen, as usual. Final practice and just uppers for going to full pads tomorrow. How do you feel people adjusted to uppers today compared to yesterday when it was a bit of a slow start? Um, it started with our film session that we did before practice. Uh, we broke down uh, film from practice yesterday, which is really good. Um, we saw a lot of good things, but we also saw a lot of bad things, and we corrected a lot of those bad things. So um, that was a good way to start practice, or you know, the before practice, uh, getting in the film room. And then once we got out to practice, I felt like the energy was a lot better. I think overall the entire team responded really well today. Um, and then, you know, when we go to offensive team, that's that's when we can really start clicking. So we got it all on film. We're going to do another film session tomorrow. So I'm excited, you know, to see what we got on film today so we can break it down tomorrow. And I know the kids are too because they're learning. And I think they really enjoy seeing uh, themselves on film. You know, whether it's good or bad, you know, they, we all have, you know, this entire program is uh, filled with great kids and they, they want to learn. Yeah, and you keep mentioning the film. Jay Ferguson, Rio's dad, has gotten a lot of the film on the drone. Has that made a difference these last couple days? Yeah, I think that's a huge advantage. I think with our football program, having that drone, uh, you can get just about any angle you want. You can get one from the sideline view, uh, kind of up like from a stands point of view, or you can just do an aerial straight, you know, uh, up and down. So you can kind of see from a bird's eye view uh, what our players are doing. So it's really cool. Uh, it's an addition that we put in last year but I think we're utilizing it a little bit better this year. Once you're starting to watch the film, master these plays, you've been able to do some 11 on 11s, get some real guys in there for the offense. Yeah, absolutely. Um, once we start mastering all of our base plays on offense, we can start incorporating our, our uh, you know, game plan plays. So for example, I mean, we have Clinton and Bartlett on Saturday. So all the plays that we have in now, we're gonna roll into Clinton with. And then we play, uh, we're gonna scrimmage Franklin next Friday. That's gonna be a home uh, scrimmage at four o'clock. And then, um, you know, we can kind of start throwing in, uh, you know, some, some specialized plays just based off of film from last year and see, uh, see how well we can game plan as a staff and how the kids respond to that. And then after that, you know, we got Doherty, so we'll start game planning for Doherty. I'm trying some new things with the offense, a couple new plays and also some new combinations of players. How do you feel the players have adjusted to that? Uh, I think they like it. I think they like having, uh, you know, learning different positions to add value to themselves, but also helping the team. So I think a lot of kids are responding well to that. So a lot of players are doing a mix of running back and slot receiver, or even running back and outside receiver. Yeah, I think uh, the more versatile you, you become as a player, the, the more you're going to get on the field. So it's definitely a great opportunity for the players. And then Derek Blanchard, he's a wide receiver and a tight end. Yeah, I mean... We watched the film, and I, I was having a late-night conversation with Derek last night. After I broke down the film, I told him, I said, you're doing a great job. You know, you're opening up a lot of the coaching staff's eyes because he, he's coming in at uh, 170. And it's, it is undersized for a tight end, but if you, if you can have a mentality and be really physical at the point of attack, you're going to do really well as a tight end in, 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 uh, in our league. Great route runner, great hands. So he's definitely a vertical threat in a jump ball threat. He's you know six foot four, so he's gonna be a little bit taller than some of the cornerbacks he goes against. Stay tuned to see how the T-Hawks do in full pads as they prepare for their Saturday scrimmage in the eighth and final episode of Gonk Knox. <laughs>
almost every receiver on the team got the chance to run routes and catch deep balls. Others worked on their footwork in a drill of tires and cones. Okay. Any other bad stances here, call your teammates out and send them over to me. If you're in line, watch the guy in front of you. If they don't have a good stance, send them to me. Set. Down. Set. Call them out. <laughs> Down. Set. Go. Despite suffering a lower body injury on Wednesday, Zach Spataro helped lead blocking drills for the linemen. Other examples of leadership were seen throughout practice. Ryan Carmody gave Devin Montgomery tips and feedback as Monty practiced snapping the football. Carmody has played center for his entire T-Hawks career. Carmody is also very energetic, encouraging his teammates when they need it. Chris Ochnos does the same for the team, and he and John Fontecchio have emerged as leaders on defense in addition to the captains. Defense today looked better, during, especially during the 11-on-11s. 11 Where do you feel the defense was strongest today? Well, when it comes to like playing defense in football, you can't really do it to like a full without having full contact. So having all the pads on, going able to go 100%, that's where we got to see our defense in its true like form. People making plays. So uh, we're just flying around, having good energy, making plays. And now that you're a senior, do you feel do you feel like you've been able to be kind of a leader for the defense? Uh, I feel like I'm trying to like push everyone on the team as hard as I can. Like I'm getting in people's heads that like I know play better when they have people like criticizing them. I'm trying to like push my offensive line like going on scout D. I'm trying to make the team the best we can possibly be. Uh, trying to win the states this year. And what's your favorite part about putting full pads on? It's just the adrenaline, it's the hitting people, it's just everything just happens. It's a, just a weird feeling. It's hard to describe someone that doesn't play. During pre-practice, new addition Joey Chekowitz as well as John Fontecchio and Tiago Philadelphia practiced kicks and punts. With Rory Caffrey graduating this past June, the roles of kicker and punter are anyone's for taking. After pre-practice, the team stretches together to get ready for practice that would start with set the tone. You got it? Are we doing it? What? Yep. What? This is going to be a good set the tone. When you have a period like set the tone, it sets the tone. It literally sets the tone for practice, you know. 
So it's an important piece of, uh, of practice because then you, you can start getting uh, some matchups for kids that are battling for a spot. Or if you want to see a certain kid challenge uh, you know, another kid, uh, as a coaching staff, it's important to see them really compete. You got one from DB? Uh, let me ask coach real quick. For now, let's go. You cool with brother and brother? Yeah. Thomas Coffee! Yeah, Disco, where you at? Logan Coffee! Yeah, let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go. Come on, boys! Come on, boys! Good fast, bros. Rafferty. That's a good one. That's a good one. Hey, who wants to win? We're gonna find out right now. Come on. You good? Strapped up? DB stance is fine. That's fine. Back up a little bit. Good. Jeff Valentine. Ray Del Rey. It's a great one. It's a great one. Here we go. No oh boy. Oh boy. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good. Hey, good recovery. Keep moving the feet. Water base, water base, water base. Good job, good job, good job. And then you get uh, some big matchups, Montgomery and uh, Ryan Carmody. They uh, they like to get after a little bit too. Devin and Carmody. That's what I'm going to do. All right. Devin Monty. Carmody. Here we go. Technique. Got to have the mentality, boys. Compete. Don't twist. Drive them, don't twist. Good hands. Replace the hands. Montgomery went on to have an interception during defensive 11 on 11s. I think the point of attack in, in any football game, that's going to decide what team wins and what team loses. So if you can't be physical at the point of attack, you're, you're not going to be very successful. They get better. You know, every time we do set the tone, everybody gets juiced up a little bit, and they, they definitely get better. Um, but every time we get a matchup out there, uh, we want the energy to be high. So on the last one of the day, uh, you've got to finish that period off strong so we can go into the rest of practice with, uh, with great juice. Coach Allen trusted Chekowitz, alongside Ryan Connolly, to set the tone for practice in the final matchup of the day. Hey, this is the last one. We're first day of full pads. Get up! Get up! Get up! Most importantly, set the tone allows players to compete, which they'll have to do on Saturday in Clinton. All right, bring it up, bring it up, bring it up. Who are some of the younger guys that you think we should look forward to seeing on the field this year? Um, we got a new kid this year, Joey Chekowitz. He's a junior. He'll be an overhang safety for us. Could be a linebacker type kid too, but he's a physical kid. He likes to, he likes to get after a little bit. Uh, he just has to learn the defense a little bit better, but uh, he's, a, he's a great frame for, for a safety, and uh, we're excited to see his speed on defense. Uh, all right, hey, freshman, you're going with your coaches, all right? Hey. Older guys, we're going offensive individual, okay? Running backs are going with Coach Griff. Quarterbacks, Coach Allen. I got wide receivers. Tight ends are going with the line with Brooksy. Cool? Yes, go. Go. Break it down, hustle around, fly around, have some fun. Yep. Hey, break hey. it tight. Let's go. Hey, compete on three. One, two, three. We got to work on our hands, boys. Fundamentals. What we want is your, th this line right here for now is going to be the defender, but you're not going to hit the ball. You're gonna wave and distract it. Try to be like a windmill, right? Your job is to catch it through the traffic, okay? Eyes on the point of the ball, the tip of the football, okay? Then we'll be all right. Focus, that's the only thing you're worried about. You're not gonna get hit. Good. Football only. Come on, Parth, come on. God, hey, we gotta be better, we gotta be better. 
good. Oh boy, Raph. Football only. Good. Good. Good hands. Ball first, then tuck. Ball first, then tuck it. Come on, baby. Come on. Focus on the football. Find the ball. Find the ball. Find the ball. Good job. Football. Focus, 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 focus. Good job. Good job, right? Hey, you gotta improve every rep. Come on. Players and coaches were not perfect, but after a week of camp together, it was also time for a little fun and banter. Players debated with Coach Allen on whether a ball was tipped or not. Oh, no, hey, don't touch it. You didn't tip it? You didn't tip it. I, who heard, do you guys hear a tip? I heard a tip. I, he tipped it. I guarantee it. Hey, we got it on film. I heard it. I didn't see it. It's hard, it's hard to see. Here, you going to get a goal call? All right. It's on coach, though. Listen to coach. He's not going to put you in a bad, bad spot to catch it. Just listen. Don't cheat. Fun ball. I've never seen that. Catch the ball, come on. There you go, Ray. Good job. Good job. There you go. Hey, yeah, hey, make sure, hey, make sure our hands are spread out. If they're not, you're gonna bust up a finger. Good. Catch the tip of the football. The tip of the football. Make a diamond. He's gonna hit you right in the chest. Come on, Walshy. What is that, four so far? Come on. Hands, find the ball. Use your hands, not your body. Don't throw it to me. Hey, hey. But after this drill, wide receivers and DBs went on to have a very strong, competitive day on Thursday. The DBs helped make the defensive 11 on 11s some of Algonquin's best yet. The line worked to avoid penalties, and Coach Brooks would have the linemen do push-ups as a group as they jumped the count. Hey, just focus. It's a focus thing. Let's go. Meanwhile, Coach Allen worked with Rio, Riley, and Tiago to practice handoffs with two running back sets. Come on. Coach, can we do that one again? One more? Rob blew the horn to signal time for seven on sevens. We did not film this, as we wanted to protect the team. But there was plenty more to do now that full pads were on. Stay tuned for the second half of this double episode and final episode of Gonk Knox. you look at a kid like Eli, he's starting to really learn the defense now. So it's exciting to see him be very physical on the outside as a corner, uh, but he covers well too. So he's, a, he's getting smarter every day. That's what we're looking for. Uh, everybody's getting in their defensive playbooks too and uh, kind of, you know, locking everything down. What's he got? I need from sideline to sideline, pairs across the field, and then once we do that, we're going to do every five yards right behind that group. So Freshman guys, get in line behind the varsity. Let's go. With full pads, you tried some new drills. What's, your, what's the team's favorite part of that stuff? Um, I think when you teach tackling um, to the, the entire team, they start uh, learning the fundamentals of the expectation of tackling, right? So it's a little bit newer this year, um, you know, more of a rugby style tackle, which is, you know, safer for, the, for both players. Uh, you kind of take the head out of the hit. Uh, so that's a key for us, but they're starting to understand uh, that technique and they get excited to hit each other. You know, unfortunately, uh, we hate hitting each other every day in practice, but so days like on uh, Saturday and, uh, you know, another scrimmage that we have next week, we're excited to, to hit another team. Hey, listen up. You're learning a new tackle technique with your partner. So pay attention. Fog a hawk tackle. Who plays rugby? Similar to a rugby tackle. Okay? You're going to attack his near hip. 
Okay? Near hip. If I'm here, I'm on his hip. You're going to attack his thigh. It is shoulder into thigh, wrap, and drive your feet. Okay? If he doesn't go down, yank his feet under him and he will go down. Do we understand that? Eyes to thigh, contact, wrap, and drive. Okay? Do we understand that? Why are we doing this? It takes your head out of being hit by crossing his body. So we attack the near hip, wrap, and drive. Okay? Now, you're going to match up with your partner, and we're going to walk through this. Okay? You're going to attack the hip, make contact on his thigh with your shoulder, wrap, and drive. If you are being tackled, do not try to catch yourself. You will break your wrist. That's how injuries happen. You have pads on, go to the ground nice and easy. Don't yank the feet so they, they hit the ground hard. We go through the motions here. You're learning the technique. We understand. Ready? Be with a partner. Back in the near hip. Eyes on thighs. Make contact. Wrap and drive our feet. Ready, set, go. Good. Wrap up. Make sure we wrap up. I make the contact. I wrap your legs. Can you run? No. Okay? More effective than if you're going to square somebody up and hit them in the chest because they can still run their feet, correct? We all understand that. You're going to wrap tackling today an individual with your individual period. All right? Take it serious, please. All right? You good? Go. Now that full pads were on, it was time to do some tackling drills. The entire team, freshmen included, came together to practice new techniques for legal tackling. If you wrap the thighs, you shouldn't be able to run. Wrap and squeeze, you will go down. Okay? Same guy tackle. Sick go. Attack the near hip. Ready? Sick go. So how do you feel about the team's tackling skills today? I noticed a lot of tackling drills. Yeah, I think um, I think they went well. We, we split up into defensive individual uh, positions. And when you can get different situations for, for some of the players and you know their respective positions, it's good because then they can expect it on the game field. Um, so we're going to find out how well they're learning that. And uh, they're going to put it to the test on Saturday against Clinton Bartlett. Not bad. Not bad. Just drive through him next time and go with him. I want you to shoot around behind him, grab him far, wrap him up. Okay, don't bring your eyes up. Right? Here, go. Come on, Mike. Oh! Bring him down. Ready. Mike, you like your arm on the next Come in a little more under control. You won't be able to get by him. Break down when he gets there. Check out. Ah, do it again. Do it again. Stay up. Stay up. Guys, we're also we're too tall when we're getting to the ball carrier. Stay low. Yeah, keep it coming. Come on, you got your head up. Right through. That's better. Okay, not too bad. Keep dragging your feet, though. Keep that wrestle. Go. Here we go. Okay, drive your feet through. Don't go to the ground.
Kiwis on three, Roman slide out. One, two, three, Kiwis. Go. During seven on sevens, the freshmen continued to work on tackling and blocking. Go, Colin. Good job. It's good to see freshmen like Kaz Conway come into these drills with the same energy as the upperclassmen. As usual, everyone ended practice with a little running. First day of pads. How we do? Good. 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 Right? Energy is kind of low, but we're learning, right? Tomorrow, the expectation is we got to ramp it up a little bit more, okay? Offense, we got to go full speed. Defense, we got to go full speed. That's pretty good defensive period, though, for the team. I like that. Uh, who had to pick? Good job. Good job. Nice. Make sure we hydrate during practice. If you need water, go get water, okay? The in the injury uh, brigade is starting to build a little bit, right? Just my cheek. Okay, there's a difference. There's a difference between being hurt and being injured. You gotta find a way to battle through some bumps and bruises, right? Find a way to be tough. This is football. Find a way to have that mentality to keep getting better every day, no matter what. Is that clear? It's coach. Coach. All right, be excited to be here. All right, full pads was, was a success. I'm going to mark that down as a success. Tomorrow, we will be better, right? It's coach. Coach. You know things, Brooksy? Uh, we just got to get better, continue getting better. Okay, still too many questions. I did like, uh, you know, a little bit more pep in the scout team today. Uh, you guys did okay. Um, I think we're competing every day. We're still not locked and loaded on the, uh, the starting group. We're going to continue to compete, so. Keep working. Yeah, a lot of you guys are asking good questions, though. Um, you know, willingness to learn, people trying to get into it mentally. So keep that up. Uh, it'll go a long way. Right. Good job on uh, defensive team today, guys. A lot of good hard work. Just keep it up. Like, All right, Casey. Oh, yeah. Listen, first live period on team. I thought it was okay. Going to be better. Yeah, you got to ramp it up a little bit. Defense is mentality. Right? You gotta set the tone of the game, you gotta set the tone of the drive every single play. Okay? Got some battles going on in position wise. D line, DBs, linebackers. Right? You wanna spot, compete for it. Let's go. Right? I heard the, the word compete and competition. That's what we gotta focus on tomorrow. Alright? Come us up. Sit down. Sit down. That's one on TV. Hey. Be excited to be here for full pads, right? Okay? You guys are going to miss days like today. Okay? Yesterday is done. Today is now. Tomorrow hasn't happened yet. We all we got. We all we got. Let's go. Hey, two, three. One, two, three. I spoke with Pedro Ribeiro and head coach Taylor Allen after practice. I'm here with running back and linebacker Pedro Ribeiro. So how do you feel you did as a defense today? 
especially in the linebacker. Um, I think we did really well today. I think we got to the ball. We had our had a lot of good hand movement, and, uh, and um, but we still have a lot to improve on as a core. You know. And what's one area you feel you want to improve on offense or defense? On defense, um, I tend to get excited and like over pursue a lot. I think I need to take a step back and make sure that I secure like the tackle and make sure I get to the ball. And uh, on offense, um, I think I need to like just learn my assignments and just get in my playbook. So you're talking about toning it down a bit on defense. Um, what does controlled aggression exactly mean to you? Controlled aggression to me, you have to put yourself in a position where you have to, you can be the best like player on defense that you can be, and really like take yourself and like just make a play and like just get to the ball, and do your job. And what are you looking forward to most heading into the scrimmage on Saturday? Hitting. That's, I've always loved the, the clash, the pads, and the the rush you get from playing. Thank defense, you. especially in 11 on 11, to look better today. How do you feel about the defensive performance? Um, well, we went into preseason really harping on uh, the defensive side of the ball. We knew that our defense would be our weakness, but today it looked like our strength, so that was always good. So if you can always make your strengths or your weaknesses your strengths, you're in a good spot. Um, uh, in terms of the offensive side of the ball, we're getting really good looks right now towards the end of the week on scout defense. You got a kid like Chris Oknos that's really putting in the work and making our offensive line work. It, that makes us better every single day. So hats off to Chris on that. Uh, there's a bunch of other kids in the secondary too that give our receivers a run for their money too. So we're ramping up throughout the, the week, uh, ramping uh, the energy up a little bit, getting ready for Clinton, uh, the Clinton Bartlett scrimmage. So. Uh, this is a great day for us. Tomorrow's going to be even better. Heroes, hail to the victors, valiant, hail, hail, Algonquin, leaders of Midwatch. I like, I like it. The team had one more practice left before their scrimmage in Clinton, and they were ready to compete.